literally beating her up and she's about to crash into that tree. Who's the guy? I feel like the system is failing me. This is the fifth time I'm calling now. And he said, you're next. There was just a woman driving a car and a man was hitting her. It was just another domestic violence case to them. I've been calling about an this assault that I witnessed. On this woman in the car, she ran into a tree. I'm on Franklin. He's on Franklin. Franklin. I'm Jonathan Walsh. And tonight we have a different kind of a story for you. Here's why. We were already out reporting on road conditions on Cleveland's west side when producer Sama Assad and photographer Rob Klein and I witnessed the aftermath of a brutal domestic assault, a woman being beaten inside of her car. And as journalists, we don't normally get personally involved right. in stories, but we didn't really feel like journalists in that moment, yeah. right? We just felt like we needed to help. Yeah. Like anybody would, I think our gut reaction was, we gotta do something about this. Right? Absolutely, and because of all that, we followed this case every step of the way for more than a year. And again, we wanna warn you, what you're about to see is graphic. It is real. It's exactly what happened. You okay? She's bleeding. Yeah. She probably got it. How you doing? Is she okay? Hey, we're friends. Uh, yeah, can you call the police? Yes, yes. we are right now. Yeah, what, we got it. Did he hit you or did yeah, that? Yeah, no, he was, he was, I just seen him beating her up. He was literally beating her up and she was about to crash into that tree. Okay, I'm and calling. So that's why I jumped on my car and I tried to help her. All right. I don't care about this shirt being bloody. Okay. I care more about your, you being Okay. Sick. This is this is Franklin, right? Yeah, this is Franklin. I'm Six, calling that Sixty one ten. Do you know who that guy was? Who's the guy? That's her I guess that's her friend. Her boyfriend. He's walking down the street. Her ex-boyfriend. Ex Alright, we're gonna we're gonna go follow him. We're gonna go follow him. Thank you. Sixty one ten is where they are. Franklin. Dude, no one's picking up nine one one. The victim appeared to be in good hands, and we didn't want this guy to get away, so we followed him. There was just a woman driving a car and a man was hitting her and it, she ran it into a pole. This man was just beating on this woman in the car and she ran into a tree. I'm on Franklin. He's walking down Franklin by West Fifth. Okay, where is she at? Where is she at? There's a man who apparently beat up a woman, hit her in the face while they were driving. She's all bloodied up. We just drove by and saw her. They need help. We are now following we're the now suspect. Fo just, we're right next to the guy. So I'm driving, trying to follow the guy at a distance, the suspect, Michael Hartman. He looks absolutely menacing. Yeah, Hartman gave us the death stare as he was right. walking away. He threw off his bloody shirt. And at this point, police and an ambulance have responded to the victim, Melissa Loomis, and they're treating her. Can you hear you? Hello, how are you? All right, ma'am, we got one of the uh, police in here asking some questions, okay? Oh, my, yeah, you did get assaulted. Yeah, it sounds like he was doing a pretty good number on her. Uh, the only thing that stopped him was, I think they left. Uh, yeah, there was two uh, two other women driving down the street, I guess, and saw him like hitting her in the car and uh, got out of their car and pulled him out. What happened on June 1st? Well, I was coming home from work and I turn on to Franklin and I see this car driving very erratically, just really slowly and like swerving. This man was hitting the woman in the driver's seat and it caused it to, you know, collide on the other side of the road. I could see a lot of blood coming from her and I kind of, the man just had no emotion and he just got out and walked away. Okay, copy that, thanks. Um, we'll, we'll be around, it'll probably be about uh, 10 minutes. Something about, like, over here, and that's, the, that's the same, if not a little bit worse, with these domestics. It ain't a joke. How many punches did you see? At least four or five. I mean, he was really going at it. I'm going to just make it a felonious assault because... I mean, it, that y'all look broke to me. I don't know. I'm no, I'm no doctor, but... Mm -hmm. We'll see what Sarge says when he gets there. 911, police ambulance are fire. Hi, um, I have an update on where a suspect is. I've been calling about an assault that I witnessed, or the aftermath of an assault that I witnessed. Okay, well, I gave the information. Thank you. He's a danger. All right. He's, he's clearly a danger to himself and others. I've called 911 so many times at this point, and it's so frustrating because we haven't been able to get anybody. And Hartman is sitting outside of this bar. He's right there. He's right there. I finally see a cop, and I try to flag him down. Oh, my God. I 
they going to the convenience store? Oh. Turn the f Are they going to the convenience yeah, store? Yes, they do. Are they? Take a couple pictures of you. Hold on a minute. Hi, um, I'm following up because I had called earlier about an assault suspect that's sitting in XYZ Tavern. Um, police have not shown up yet, and this is the fifth time I'm calling now. Um, I'm trying to figure out when police will be by to pick this guy up. Before we can go pick this guy up, we have to confer with the victim, and we've been with her so we can get the details of exactly what happened, and she has to want to file charges against him. We can't just go pick him up if she doesn't want to file charges against him. What do they mean they can't pick him up? Of course police can go and pick him up. We've done all this reporting on domestic violence and we know that police can go make an arrest. An hour and a half after our original 911 call, another cop car rolls by. And I jumped out, tried to flag him down. He's, she's at the hospital. This, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, okay. You got it? Yeah. I can't put him on my back seat. I got my dog. We've been waiting forever. We finally have a cop, but he's a canine officer. He's got a dog in the back of his car. He can't make an arrest. Now what? He decide, decided to grab me by my hair and start punching me in my face. And he had pinned me in between both seats and was just punching me and punching me. Okay, we we gotta arrest him because he, he beat this girl up pretty bad. I don't know why the news media is over there, but um uh, he beat her up pretty bad and, and she may she may have some um uh, broken bones in her face for all we know. Hey Paul, we're on our way. We're on about thirty eighth in Detroit, so we'll be here within seconds. Okay. And with them guys with the media, I'm like, okay, this is something because they're like, we've been trying to get a car for an hour. I'm like, oh great, all right. So well, if it came over, if it came over silly, I know, but I didn't know the whole story. And yeah, we like, had a car over there, and he was gone. Eight two seven three. She needed to go to the hospital, yeah. so that's where we went. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, you know, you know how it goes. Like, yeah. Then the next, the story isn't about. It's about you know they they couldn't get a policeman for an hour. Right? Oh yeah, no problem. They're concerned about a negative story about police response times? I mean, they got to Melissa pretty quickly. But well, meanwhile, Hartman, the suspect, has been walking the streets for two hours. Who knows what he could have done? Right. So we got him, and um, he's under arrest. And please, please press charges on this. I will. My phone rang. It just comes up Cleveland, Ohio. So I answered it. It was Mike and he said, you're next. Michael, it's Jonathan Walsh from News Channel 5. We need to talk to you about this warrant for your arrest. He owed me $40. He got in my truck. He kind of had a crazy look on his face. As soon as I asked him to get out of my truck, um, he grabbed the left side of my head and started punching me. I mean, it was... Like I said, I'm like, I thought he was going to kill me. I've, I've never been so scared in my life. After all that it took to arrest him, Hartman never shows up in court. And he's still on the loose. He's still out on the street. Yeah. And he happens to have a violent criminal past, too. So they issue a warrant for his arrest. Case number 618-868, Michael Hartman, KPS. So at this point, we've been in constant contact with Melissa, and she tells us that he's making threats. On my birthday, 6.30 in the morning, my phone rang. It just comes up Cleveland, Ohio, so I answered it. It was Mike, and he said, you're next. He said, I'm coming out there tonight to kill you. When you hear the words, I'm going to kill you, what, what goes through your mind? 
um, fear. I was scared. Very scared. I have kids. You know, I still want to be a mother. So here's Melissa Loomis, right? She's a mom. She's taking care of her mom. She loves her kids. She does not need this. No. And she's getting awful text messages. I'm going to go to the grave loving you. You did me dirty. Time to pay the piper. Those who was looking out for you, who will save them? What is it like knowing that perhaps this guy's just at his apartment and police are just not picking him up? I feel like the system is failing me, like nobody cares. After hearing all these threats, we were fearful that he was going to do something to her. And to think that he may be just sitting at home. Which is completely baffling to us. So frustrating. Why can't they pick him up? So we decided we're going to pay him a visit. Hello, Michael. Yeah. Hi, it's Jonathan Walsh. Uh, I need to talk to you real quick. Can you come out? Hello? Sir, it's Jonathan Walsh, and I need to talk to you real quick. Can you come out? No, I don't know a Jonathan Walsh. Do you know a Melissa Loomis? Who? Melissa Loomis. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? There's a warrant for your arrest. Concerning a felonious assault, you did not show up in court. He's there. We found him. He's got warrants. Michael, it's Jonathan Walsh from News Channel 5. He's literally the thickness of a doorway. So what could we do but call for help? What's the problem? There's a gentleman who is wanted on a felonious assault. Um, he has not shown up for court a couple of times, and he's sitting in his apartment as I speak. Do you have a date of birth or a social? I don't. All right, if you come up with any other information, call us back and let us know. We'll try to see if we can locate um, a warrant for that mail, and if we do locate a warrant for that mail, then we will send the address and try to apprehend them. Okay, I do know for sure that there is a warrant for his arrest in not only Cleveland, okay, but, but also Solon. Okay, so the, the thing is, you're not giving me a date of birth, you're not giving me a social. Why would I have his personal information? Why do they need that? My Hartman is actually a really common name. If we can locate something for Michael Hartman in his 50s that's a white male, then we'll send out there. If we can't, then we, then we won't. That's how that works. So I did a quick search of the court dockets. There are only three Michael Hartmans listed. The only one open is this case involving the man behind that door right there. He, he answered the buzzer. This was 12.30. Can you open the door for me? I, I'm, I'm not allowed to go in. We don't have a search warrant. Okay, so I cannot go in. There is a warrant, though, for his arrest. I understand that. Police finally arrive. They have all the information they need. They don't have a warrant. Why would they not show up with a warrant? He's right there. I'm going to call my boss, see what he wants to do. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. So finally, the police supervisor shows up. But again, without a search warrant. This is the second time we've tracked this guy down for them. The police response, once again, frustrating. No search warrant or anything? I mean, is that, is that, the, is that the biggest block at this point? You'd have to forward all your questions to the public information officer. Have a good day. You got a shot of them just walking away? Yeah. So Melissa's best friend, Stephanie, has also played such a critical role in all of this. They're every step of the way for Melissa. And she's also been calling the sheriff's office, trying to get them to pick Cartman up. I made a call. I actually had made two calls, one previously where nothing was done to the sheriff's department. 
And then I made a second call and t spoke directly to a woman. I just felt like, yeah, they weren't taking it seriously at all. Like it was not a big deal. It was just another, you know, domestic violence case to them. Finally, October 4th, three months, by the way, since he hasn't shown up in court, we get the news. Hello? Hello, Melissa. Yes. Hey, it's Jonathan Walsh from News 5. Hi, how are you? I'm doing okay, doing all right. We've heard that Michael Hartman has been arrested. How do you feel now he's in custody? I am so happy and relieved. I kind of felt like I had no choice. You know, I'm getting my day finally. Is it emotional for you? Uh, you're going to make me cry now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very emotional. Plea is just to felonious assault. So if he wants to plead to that today, he can. But it's gotten agreed two to four years. So okay. there's no reduction. Because he was just looking for the five years probation. Yeah, and time he wants served. probation and he wants to go to Virginia. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, well, the, actually, it's probably better if you wait out here because once we start, you'll have to go outside anyways. Melissa wanted a trial, but behind closed doors, something changed and a plea deal was on the table. All rise. You may be seated. Your Honor, in consideration for that anticipated guilty plea, the state of Ohio would move this honorable court to add the attempt statute. But, but nobody tried to reach out to you and, and mm -mm. ask you questions, what you saw? No. Nobody followed up? No. Does that surprise you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it did. Um, especially because, you know, like I was an eyewitness and I stayed and, and I was willing to make a statement or something. But yeah, it does. And it, it was surprising that it was like it never happened. The court accepts your guilty plea. Give us your initial reaction to what happened. Um, I'm kind of pissed. I kind of felt like I had no choice. Mm -hmm. It was either take the deal or go through a whole trial. And I didn't really want to go through a whole trial. I want this to be over with. But I mean, there's a good possibility he can get away with a year of prison. How do you feel right now? Um, I'm very nervous. Um, I wish Stephanie was here. Since we last spoke, Melissa's best friend Stephanie unexpectedly passed away. I don't know how I'm going to be in the courtroom because she kind of made all this happen for me. The state would ask for prison, Your Honor, and the state would ask for the um, range of that prison sentence to be three to five years. The state would prefer five years. Thank you. Unfortunately, I still have nightmares. I take medication for them. You know, I laid up in Stubby's house for seven days having my children take care of me. He's just evil. And this right here, this is fake. So fake. I don't believe one tear that's being shed. I'm just so sorry for everything that's happened. I don't know the best things to be this way. He does have convict similar convictions. Uh, as to this case, so certainly I don't believe a minimum sentence would be appropriate in this case and sentence Mr. Hartman to a term of incarceration of four years to be served at the Lorraine Correctional Institution or to the sentence in the uh, execution with credit for any and all time served.
Melissa, give us your initial reaction. Um, I mean, I'm satisfied, I guess. I mean, I do believe he deserves a lot more time because he's just an evil person. I just kind of felt like it is what it is. I mean, the man's got to be sentenced to put in prison, you know. So if this is the way we got to do it, we got to do it. I have, I have great family. I have great kids. I mean, they were a great support for me through all this. So yeah. I'm just happy it's done. Okay, I'm calling. That's why I jumped in my car and I tried to help her. I've been calling about an assault that I witnessed. And I was just punching. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Michael. And he said, you're next. The dark one. I still have nightmares. Sentenced Mr. Hartman to a term of incarceration of 40 years. What a long, twisted process this has been. And this was only one case. Yeah, one. Some may say the justice system worked well in this case, right? He got four years, but look at all it took. Melissa's personal struggle, all the threats she was getting, and even though the case is over, her life has forever changed. And who knows what impact our involvement really had on this case. Right, a camera crew can't go around and follow each and every domestic violence case, but we were there for the arrest. Mm -hmm. We tracked him down. He didn't show up in court. The threats, I mean, we were there for all of it. Mm -hmm. Would he have gotten four years without that? Who knows? What we do know, based on our research, is domestic violence abusers are rarely sentenced to prison. And for survivors like Melissa, it's a constant struggle through the system. We want to thank you for joining us tonight and taking this journey through the system. Good night. Cleveland EMS, what is the emergency? Cleveland 911, what's your emergency? Police ambulance and fire. Police, um, I don't think they'll need an ambulance, but there was just a woman driving a car and a man was the car. She ran it into a pole. We're going to go follow him. We're going to go follow him. Thank you.